Apple's Mac Mini has always been an entry-level Mac device, and it's still the cheapest way to get a Mac, even though the base price is $300 more than the base model from 2014. The new 2018 Mac Mini, however, is a powerhouse, featuring up to a 6-core processor, up to a massive 64 gigs of RAM, up to 2 terabytes of storage, 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports, and even the option of a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, something that only comes on the iMac Pro. By far, the best upgrade you can make to the Mac Mini is upgrading to the 6-core i7 processor for $300 more. It's a seriously powerful chip in a seriously small Mac, so the question a lot of users are having is if the 6-core processor will thermal throttle and lose performance in extended tasks. Along with the CPU upgrade, we also upgraded the storage to 256GB and upgraded to 32GB of RAM for a total price of $18.99. The amount of storage you choose is up to you, but you can definitely upgrade the RAM yourself and save $350 on a 32GB kit. Before we test thermal throttling, let's first look at some benchmarks to see how the raw performance compares to the other high-end Macs. In Geekbench 4, it scores just over 25,000 points in the multi-core test, which is what really matters. In comparison, the 2018 i9 MacBook Pro scored 22,574 points, and the base iMac Pro scored 30,719 points. Now that's a seriously impressive score, considering the price difference between these Macs. Unfortunately, graphics performance is where the Mac Mini suffers, as the graphics chip is built into the processor, unlike the 15-inch MacBook Pro and iMacs which get dedicated graphics chips. So in Geekbench Force Metal Test, it scored a very low 24,962 points, compared to 44,308 on the base 15-inch MacBook Pro, and a massive 155,232 points on the base iMac Pro. We saw the same results in Unigen's Heaven Benchmark, where the Mac Mini scored 192 points compared to 450 on the base MacBook Pro and 1,831 on the iMac Pro. Clearly, the Mac Mini alone isn't meant for video editors or anyone else who needs to render graphics. Luckily, it's packing four Thunderbolt 3 ports so you can easily connect an eGPU that's even more powerful than the graphics in the MacBook Pro for less than $500 more. Now let's finally get to the thermal throttle testing using the same exact CPU stress test that we ran on the 2018 i9 MacBook Pro. We're basically running Cinebench R15 five times back to back without letting the processor cool down, while also looking at the processor's clock speeds and temperatures to see if it's throttling. Shortly after starting the first test, the CPU clock speed shot up to a maximum of 4.26 GHz. A second later, the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, and the clock speed starts to slowly come down to around 3.5 GHz. Still above the 3.2 GHz base clock, it finished the first run with a great score of 1,188. Sometime after starting the second run, the clock speed drops below 3.5 GHz, showing that the processor is starting to slow itself down a little bit more to keep the temperatures down. It finished the second run with a score of 1144. That's 44 points less than the first run, showing some thermal throttling. After starting the third run, the clock speed lowers down to 3.4 GHz sooner than before and even hits a low of 3.3 GHz once, before scoring 1134 points, only 10 points lower than the previous test. For the fourth run, we noticed the clock speed was staying between 3.4 and 3.5 GHz before finishing with a score of 1,103 points. We can see that the score dropped with each consecutive run of the test, dropping from an initial score of 1,188 to 1,103, so the machine is definitely thermal throttling. However, our fifth run scored 1,132 points, showing that the system's temperature and clock speeds have completely stabilized. And honestly, we thought that it would thermal throttle more than this, and we're actually really impressed with its final stabilized performance. With the i9 MacBook Pro, our first run score was 1,051, our second score was 978, and our final score was 1,111, showing similar thermal throttling results. So the Mac Mini easily outperforms the i9 MacBook Pro, with a final average of 1,140 points compared to 1,011 on the MacBook. So let's answer the original question, does the Mac Mini thermal throttle? Yes, it does, but we're impressed with how the performance held up over time. The clock speed averaged out at around 3.4 to 3.5 GHz under 100% CPU workload, so you can forget about the advertised 4.6 GHz turbo boost speed, but at least it didn't go down to the base 3.2 GHz clock speed. Overall, if you're a photo editor that's currently using a Windows PC and are thinking about buying a Mac, the 2018 Mac Mini is the perfect machine for you. In many cases, the base quad-core model will be just fine, but if you really want the extra performance, definitely upgrade to the top-end 6-core processor. You may already have an external display with a high level of color accuracy and a mouse and keyboard, so it's the cheapest way to get a powerful Mac for photo editing. For video editors and everyone else with a heavy GPU workload, you're gonna need an eGPU, and even then, it's still a great deal compared to a 15-inch MacBook Pro 
or a high-end 5K iMac. So thanks for watching guys and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.